TI-80, 30, TI-30 that we have, okay? The TI-83s will take all of this data, but the TI-30s will only allow you to input 42 digits. So we can't use the stats version, like the statistics table on this calculator to calculate our median. Um, we have to do it by hand or we can use Excel. Okay, so we have lots and lots of numbers. So by hand we have to first put them in numerical order because remember we're trying to find the median, which is that middle number. Yeah, I'm, there's a two, right? Two is the smallest. Just double check. Yep, so we have a two. Let's see, do I have any other twos? Any other twos? There's a three, but I don't see any other twos, so I got my three. I'm going to pause the recording while we do this, because otherwise it's going to be very boring. So um, let me write this in. So I had five by ten, so 50 numbers. <clears throat> we go in 25 from each direction, which lands us in the middle here. Halfway between 19 and 21 is 20. So my median is 20. Okay. Now, yes, it is. It's too much work. It's pain to do a long list like this by hand. And since our calculators, did she big long list of numbers, the best way to do this is using Excel if your calculator won't take in that many numbers. So you go through and you have to type in all of the numbers down the same column. Now once you've typed in all the numbers, you can actually have Excel do several calculations for you as well. But for median, after you get all the numbers in, you want to highlight them. Then we go to data, which should be a tab across the top or under a tool somewhere. If you have an, huh? Yeah, well, that's what we want to do next. You want to do data and then sort A to Z. You want to click data and then sort A to Z. And this button right here puts it in numerical order. Okay. And what I'm going to go through and show you guys actually how to do this on Excel. I just want to show you this first. Then we know that I entered 50 numbers. So 25 and 26 are here and here. We just go find that spot. And because I entered an even number of numbers, I go 25 this way, 25 that way. I'm in between these and I get the same median. So let me show you how that works really quickly on actual Excel. as soon as I pull back up the list of numbers. Okay, so I've got my Excel spreadsheet. And in here I have a big giant list of numbers. Okay, so I'm going to pause while I enter the numbers just because again that's... All right, so once all the numbers are in, I knew I was supposed to have 50 numbers, I have 50 numbers. Come to the top, highlight that, data, sort. They're now in order. Much faster than that process we just did of going through the list by hand and writing down all these numbers. Now, again, 50 numbers, so here's 25 and 26, so I'm right between these two at 20. That's how I found my median. There are um, things that you can do with statistics on Excel, and we'll get into some of that when we get to those things. Um, and it usually requires downloading a plugin, actually. <clears throat> and the nice thing about Excel is that it will sort the whole thing for you. So as long as you type in the numbers correctly, they'll be nice and sorted into a nice numerical list. And then you can also find the next thing we're going to talk about, which is mode, using this same sorted list. Any questions on how to do the Excel sorting? 
Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. Um, I don't know. I'd have to look. I don't know of any off the top of my head. Okay, so once you've done that, we can also find the median in this way. Um, here we have grouped data to find the median. I have 11 students, sorry, 11, six students stole 11 bars, 12 students, eight students sold 12 bars, five stole 13, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to show you guys how to do this without writing out the big long list. Okay? Right? So we're going to add all these numbers together first. So 6 plus 8 plus 5 plus 13 plus 17 plus 15, and we have 64 students. Okay? Now we want to find the median. This is an even number of students. 64 divided by 2 is 32. So we need to go 32 students into the middle, right? So I need 32 students here. Let me make that bigger. And I need 32 students over here. And here's going to be my median. So far okay? So I have 6, 8, 9, and 5. So, so far that's 14, 19. Let me just double check that. So 6 plus 8 plus 5 plus 13 puts me at 32 students exactly. So this is my halfway point. This is 14. So that's the number that would be in this spot if I listed out all the numbers. Does that make sense? This is number of students. And that equals 32. Okay. So then over here, 17 students sold 15 bars and 15 students sold... 16 bars and 17 plus 15 is also 32 and so when I cut the line off the if I was listing all of these like I was listing 11 six times and then 12 eight times etc I'd hit at 14 when I picked back up I'd be at seven, uh, 15 15 yeah because this would be the last number on this side and this would be the first number on that side does that make sense so my median is in between 14 and 15, so it's 14 and a half. And I calculate that by adding 14 plus 15 and dividing it by 2. Do you guys want to see another example like that? Yeah? So here's what's going to happen. Again, I'm going to total up all my number of students. So I have 5 plus, yes, I did, plus 7, plus 11, plus 13, plus 10. Sorry. It gives me 48 students. And uh, the only thing, I, I changed these numbers. I didn't change those numbers over there. So 48 divided by 2 is 24. So that means I'm going to have 24 numbers over here and 24 numbers over here. Okay, and then the median will be in the middle. Okay. Now, I need to figure out where 24 falls in here. Okay, so 5 plus 2 plus 7, just that amount, is 14. Plus 11 would be 25. Do you see that? That would be 25 numbers because there's 
So I'm going to have 5 plus 2 plus 7 plus 1 of those 11 students to make 24. And over here, I'm going to have 10 plus 13 plus 10 to make No, oh, yeah, 10 over here and one over there. Sorry. I wrote that backwards. That's better. Okay. So what's going to happen, though, is this 11 students right here is going to get split into 10 and 1, which is going to cause the last number in this list of numbers, because I would list 11 five times, and then I would list 12, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And once I hit the 24th number, it would be 14. No, I, 11 is 10 plus 1. Okay, This list here is the number of times 11 is showing up. So 11 would show up 5 times down the list. 12 would show up twice. 13 would show up 7 times down the list. And then 14 would show up 11 times down the list. You guys don't want to write all that numbers out, right? So we figure out that, guys, sh there need to be 24 numbers on this side and 24 numbers on this side. So here's 14 of those numbers. But if I, put, if I were to stop after the 11, it would make it 25 and 23. So I'm splitting the 11. 10 of them will go up here. And one of them will go down here. Does that make sense? So those 11 numbers, 10 are on this side, one of them is on this side. And the number that's getting split is 14. So down this list, there would be 10 14s, and over here there would be 1 14, and then 13 15s and 10 16s. Does that make sense? Please don't make me list them all out. Okay. I need to split this list into, this isn't the number of the times that this number shows up. Okay, these are not my numbers. This is just like a tally of how many times. This, these are the numbers over here. So the list would be 5 11s followed by 2 12s followed by 7 13s followed by 11 14s followed by 13 15s followed by 10 16s. That's a big, long list. That's why I said, please don't make me write that. So I find where the halfway point is, and then I figure out 5, 2, 7. That's 14 of the numbers. I need 24. So I have to take 10 of these to make 24. That's one left over, which goes down here. So 1 plus 13 plus 10 is 24. So that's where the two lists split. So it's splitting in between the same number. So I have 14 on the right and 14 on the left. So my median is 14. If there's two different numbers, if I have 14 and 15, then the median is in between them because you add the numbers together and divide by 2. But if it's the same number on either side, well, I could still add them together and divide by 2, but if I add 14 plus 14 and divide it by 2, guess what I get? No, 14 plus 14 and then divide by 2. 14. So there's no point in doing the math. If your median lands where you have the same number on both sides, it's just that number. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you find the median if you don't have... If you have an odd list of numbers, if there were 65, let's say, I would have 32 and 32 and one number in the middle, which would be my median. But since I don't have an, since I have an even number, I have 32 and 32 and there's nothing in the middle, so I add the two numbers on either side of where the middle would be and then divide them by two. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mode is the value that appears most often. Okay. 
So if two or more values appear with the same frequency, they're both modes. You can have more than one mode. Okay, um, mode is the number that shows up the most often, so it can be used as a measure of central tendency because it's the, the number that appears the most, right? So you figure the most people are having whatever that is. Um, the problem is that sometimes there is no mode because n no numbers repeat, and sometimes there's more than one mode and they could be really far off from each other. Like in a list of numbers, you could have the number two show up three times and you could have the number 17 show up three times and they're not anywhere even close to each other. No. no. Um, the same set of data, though, will only have one average and only have one median. So sometimes mode is not a good indicator of anything. Sometimes it's a great indicator of things. You just have to look at the data you have and determine based off of that. Okay, modal is used when referring to the mode of a data set. If we only have one mode, we're unimodal, like unicycle, una means one. So this is one mode. If we have two values, we're bimodal, because bi means two, like in bicycle. I might. And finally, when a set of data has more than two values that occur, we have multimodal. More than two modes. Yes, eventually. N no. No, just unimodal, bimodal, multimodal. But no. Okay. The mode is a measure of central tendency. It is the easiest one to find. It is also the least useful. Go figure. The, the easiest thing to calculate is the least useful. Here we have speed limits along a busy highway is 65 miles per hour and 10 cars that were stopped for violating the speed limit were going these speeds. What is the mode? Yeah, sort of. Because that way you don't miss anything. Okay, so uh, the sl slowest guy was going 75. Shh. And then we have the 76, 77, 78, 79, 79, 80, 81, and 82, and 83. Okay, so now I know I've got all my numbers. Now that they're sorted, it's really easy to see. I have 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. So the mode is 79. So if people are speeding, they're most likely going 79. Okay, um, we have salaries. Seven random salaries, uh, age 75 is the lowest, then 86, 92. Um, it's not a good idea with mode because you want to make sure you've got, you've got every number in the list. You don't miss anything. Um, you can, though, if you're really careful. And now, yeah, I know what you mean, your frequency tables. Yes, you can. Uh, just you have to be really careful. Okay, what is the mode of this list of numbers? One, 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 one. No mode. So if they all appear once, there is no mode. If they all appear twice, there is no mode. Yeah. As, as long as every number appears the same number of times, they can all appear 10 times each. There's still no mode. Because they're even. As long as they're even, 
But it wouldn't be multimodal. They wouldn't all be modes, right? Because they're even. Okay. All right, next. Students attending a local swimming competition were asked what color bathing suit they are going to wear. So we have a red, a blue. Oh, I, that's bad. I can't use BL for both blue and black. Darn it. Here we go. We have red, blue, and then another blue. So I've got my two blues. Black, green, and pink. What's the mode? Blue, the mode is blue. Now, with median, guys, mean and median are only for quantitative data. Down here it says mean and median can only be determined for quantitative data. What is the average of the colors of red, blue, blue, black, green, and pink? You can't do it. How are you going to You're going to add those up together and then divide by six? Because what's red plus blue plus blue plus black plus green plus pink? Black. No, but you got black. So if you add, if you had paint, right, and you mixed red and blue and blue and black and green and pink, you would have some shade of gray or black. And then if you divide black by six, what do you get? No, I said divide. So this is called guys, this is called qualitative data, okay? Qualitative is non-numerical. And statistics can be calculated for non-numerical data. It just presents a challenge. You can, um, you have to either assign numerical values to non-numerical data and go from there. Like, you know how on the survey they have you say on a scale from one to five, do you strongly disagree, strongly dis you know, agree, those kind of things? That's them turning qualitative data into a numerical value so they can perform calculations on it. Or you can do certain things with qualitative data like find the mode. So we can find the mode here on these houses. Will you guys tell me what the mode is for the houses? Really? Come up here. I have light blue. I have olive green. I have mustard, beige, dark brown, light yellow, light blue, white. Okay, so. We can do a tally on this. I have a light blue house. I have an olive green house. I have another olive green house. I have a mustard house. I have a beige house. I have another olive green house. I have a dark brown house. I have a light blue house, a light yellow, a light blue, a white, and an olive green. Yes. So the mode is olive green. <laughs> 